why we're on the night shift again. Recognize these doors? They're typical. Well, actually, these are the only ones in the southern region that aren't fully automatic. And this yellow jacket, does this give us a clue? And here, this is the telephone number. <laughs> yes, fire service. This is a great vehicle. Let's go and find Andy, who's waiting for us somewhere over the other side. He's expecting us. Here he is. Very good. Hi, Andy. Hey, how are you? Uh, how long have you been a firefighter? I'm into my fifth year now. Very good. So, are you a rookie here, or is that quite long service? No, know? it's not really. I'm no. just, just about qualified at the moment. You know. Will you show us over your yeah, vehicle? Sure. Basically, this is a, a Volvo pump and appliance, right. but uh, the more important piece of equipment that it carries is about 1,800 lit litres of water. Right. It carries self-contained breathing apparatus set with about Do you often actually duration. have to look for water on a shelter, or do you, is that normally enough It for depends you? on the situation, but basically it will cover the majority of fires we go to. Mm -hmm. After that, you have to think about taking water from underground. I mean, this is the vehicle that we're used to seeing on our roads, but That's we true, never yeah. know what's inside here, do really? we? Can you open it, Michelle? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> well, a bit. All right. Well, it's supposed, to be a portable, it's supposed to be a portable pump in there. Right. But you've got your broom, that's all right. Yeah, we've got like chemical suits up in here and other small uh, items of equipment that we we'll tend to use. Right. Chemical suits, are they for very specific chemical fires or uh, situations where a. Well, well, Stuff it, is spilt from. Yeah, basically, yeah, it, it depends. But uh, basically, if you're unsure, you get your guys rigged up in chemical suits straight away. I mean, are there any places in your region where you say, let's hope there's never going to be a fire there because it's going to be a real chemical suit heavy number? You know, are there places you dread listening to the address for, you know? Well, I mean, a lot of places carry some very, very nasty chemicals, you know, hospitals, for instance, but uh, right. you just never know. But uh, we do carry a book on the pump and appliance, what we call root cards and uh, risk cards, and they tell us about certain right, places. Right, so all the dangers are graded. That's so right, you know yeah. exactly what you're going to yeah. do. Anything in here? Oh, that's good. Yep, hoses. Hoses. And do you actually have to um, dry them all out uh, each time you use them? No, or? these are rubber lined, but the old type of hoses you still have to hang oh, them so up. Oh, so you don't do that anymore. These are all right now. Right, so you just roll them up and they're ready yep. to use again. Yep. yep. You never have to check that. Well, check it every yeah. day again. And this one? Oh, so is this the little one that you bring out for just ordinary yeah, little it's domestic fires? What we call a hose rule, yeah. It's got right. like uh, 60 metres length on it. Right. Anything interesting up the top here? Um, we have various lines and rescue lines, uh, the bus bu buckets of the pans, what we just use for the half fire. That's very good. Other items. Can we go and have a look at your, uh, your, big, uh, your big ladder? Show us this one. This is our Met's turntable ladder. Can you get up? Yep. How high will this go, Andy? Up to 30 metres. And, and how high is that in terms of, you know, how a, a building? About nine or ten floors. That's quite an office block then, isn't it? Yes, yes. Absolutely. Do you have to be trained to sort of wobble around on the top of this to see if you can actually cope with the Well, you have to have uh, what we call uh, an operator's course, which is a two-week course. Right. And so, do you have to be selected? I mean, when you actually join the fire service, do they actually ask you if you're good at ladders? Or, I mean, is that relevant, do you think? Well, it's one of the qualifications. You have to be able to have a head for heights kind of thing. Yeah, but do they test that? I mean, anyway, Yes, any, yes, yeah. Throughout your training, you'll be uh, tested on various heights so and you have make, tasks to do. And do they, they make these poor fellas climb up the ladder and wave it around just to see if they can cope with it? Well, certainly you'll climb the ladder, but they won't deliberately wave it around or uh, make it unsafe in any way at all, you know. No, right. The purpose is to actually and train it. And do, does anyone drive this vehicle? It looks like a pretty special Kind well, of it is a specialist thing. vehicle. It's a class two vehicle, and uh, normally it's a job for somebody who's been in about ten years, uh, or a junior officer will. Uh, your officer governor was saying to me uh, that, in fact, he hasn't driven one of these vehicles for like, I mean, uh, quite a short time, two and a half months, was it? And so is no longer qualified to drive it. So you have to keep your skills up to date. Uh, right? You should keep. Your, you will keep your skills up to date. Yes. Obviously, his job as a governor will be obviously to uh, delegate and uh, make sure the job is right. uh, being done. So in how many men will work on this piece of equipment? Two. 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 And that's always the same two guys? From no, it's not. You all turn it around, so each guy works with uh, another individual. Right. On a watch, you'll have, like, six operators. So, so in other words, these two, gu so these two guys on this piece of equipment, if they're not called out, they stay here. Then watch the television, do they? Well, well the they'll, they'll stay up. here, yeah. Not necessarily watching television, <laughs> but they'll obviously stay here, yes. yes. Very good. Well, well, it's time for us to move on, too. See you next time. Bye.